How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe and today I've got a really exciting video for you. I'm super stoked about this. So not only am I going to be able to show you the inside of an actual self-driving car ride, but Waymo, the company which used to be Google's self-driving car project, now it's a separate company still under Alphabet. Anyway, they are going to also be showing me the inside of their facility so we can see where all the staging happens with all the self-driving cars, where they're stored, that sort of thing, and then of course show you that ride. So basically Waymo flew a bunch of people and me out to Arizona where their whole facility is and that's where they're doing all the self-driving car stuff even for actual passengers now so we can take a look at all that it's really cool before we look at all that I do want to quickly plug my Instagram account I try to post really cool stuff on there you might have seen that I also did actually post some pictures from this whole tour and stuff on there way before I made this video so again that's at Theo Joe over on Instagram if you want to follow me so anyway let's jump in we got a lot of cool stuff to go over the first thing we saw here was the inside of the warehouse where all of the cars are stored and they had a ton of them I don't know the exact number but you can get an idea just looking at these and then obviously some of them probably would have been out on the road at the moment so not all of them are gonna be in this at the same exact time but all of these are Chrysler Pacifica minivans obviously modified to have that self-driving hardware so we can take a look at all that stuff real quick so on the top you'll see there's this big dome which has a ton of sensors so they said the top half the black part is like medium range, 360 degree laser sensors. And apparently that's like the most important one. And then the second layer, which is like the clear layer, is the optical cameras. And I believe he said there was about 19 cameras. That's also 360 degrees. And then the bottom layer is gonna be the long range lasers, which has a range of about 300 meters. I'm not sure if that's 360 degrees or just forward facing, but anyway, that's the long range one. And one funny thing they mentioned, I didn't get to see this in action, but apparently the dome has its own set of windshield wipers. They kind of come up on the sides and you can see these. I got a shot from overhead. You can see them laying down, but apparently if there's like something, I don't know, rain or dust or something blocks the views, they come up automatically and clean it off, which is funny. So in addition to the LiDAR, which is the laser and the regular cameras there's also these white flat parts on the sides which are for actual radar so radar uses radio waves to send out a pulse and get an object uh, location that sort of thing whereas lidar for lasers uses light pulses similar way so this uses both lidar and radar and you can see these spinning things are going to be those short range laser lidar sensors for things like even sensing whether someone's getting in and out of the car. It can do that sort of thing, or in the blind spot, like, I don't know, someone's passing, obviously, then it will be able to sense that if the other sensors might not happen to be able to see that. And then there's also audio sensors that might be the thing on the front top. I'm not 100% sure if I remember, but these are gonna be for things like detecting sirens. And these are very sensitive. They said in a lot of cases, the audio sensors are gonna be able to hear the sirens from much further away, way before a person would be able to, partially probably because it's outside, whereas the person's inside. And they even gave a funny example where sometimes when they were testing it, the car would pull over and they didn't know why. And then several seconds later, they would start to hear the faintest siren. And that's why it pulled over because they could hear the sirens much further away than the person could. We're gonna get a better, more detailed look of the inside of the car in a minute when we do the actual ride. But real quick, you can see that there's just the steering wheel in the front and then a screen and stuff. So nothing too crazy. But before we look at all that, we can just show the rest of the facility first. So in this particular warehouse, there was two giant areas. Both of them had cars parked in them. And in the bigger one, they also had a maintenance area where they worked on cars and just did some basic maintenance, that sort of thing. And that's more towards that back wall there. You can see some tools and stuff set up stations for that and they even had a huge wall of spare tires that you can see I don't know how quickly they go through these probably relatively quickly if they have this many cars so I don't know maybe they got a bulk deal on those also occasionally in this area you would see some of the cars driving through and they had these like big automatic garage doors that would open up and close for them. And I also noticed these big giant signs up on the walls with these weird symbols. They said that these were for calibration purposes. And if I remember correctly, apparently it's so the computer could check the calibration as it was driving through. So perhaps if it was just going to go out on the road and pick up some customers, for the beginning of the day, then it could do like a final check to make sure everything was working well, that sort of thing. But I'm not sure exactly how they work. Also in this warehouse though, they had a couple of the older Firefly generation models on display. 
So these were the prototypes that used to drive around the Google campus in California. And these are really crazy because they don't even have a steering wheel, pedals, or anything. It's like you literally just sit down and that's it. There's just a couple of seats, a little compartment thing in the front for putting stuff while you're riding, I guess. And then there's like a long screen above that, which I believe would just show some info like navigation when it's turning, that sort of thing. And then there's also this center console with some buttons. So you can see there was one for like heated seat, one for the lights, volume, I guess for the voice or I don't know, maybe you could listen to music or something, who knows? And then one for windows, the power windows. I'm not sure what that top center button was for, maybe to start the ride, but there was a big red stop now button that I guess was for emergencies. So it looked like you flip that thing up and press it. I didn't get to ride in this. These I don't believe are in use anymore anywhere, but it was just cool to look at. They also had a couple big giant Waymo 18 wheeler trucks. So I didn't get a chance to look inside that unfortunately, but you can see that it has some similar hardware, like a big dome on the top, some laser sensors, that sort of thing. So it's interesting that Waymo is not only doing some you know, ride hailing, but also potentially like long haul trucking in the future at some point. All right, so now let's get to the actual riding part, which I thought was really cool. Now, normally if you were just a regular passenger, you know, getting picked up from your house or whatever, you would use the app, but they had it pre-set up for us because it's gonna be a predetermined route. But anyway, so it pulls up and you just kind of open the door and get in, and then it shows you on the screen your destination and the arrival time, and there is a big start ride button that you press on. Please remember to buckle your seat belt. Now there was a person in the driver's seat as a backup driver, but he didn't control the car in any way while I was in there. So during the ride, you can see the screen shows you all sorts of different basic info. So again, it'll show you the destination and the estimated drop off time and the remaining time. And there's also two options at the bottom for pulling over if you have to, and then a help button, which I believe connects you to a person for doing customer support and that sort of thing. They can kind of help you out. There's also another set of physical buttons on the ceiling, which has a lot of the same stuff. So there's a help button, a lock and unlock button, another pullover button, and start ride button here too. Now there is also a camera up there, but I believe that they said at another point that they don't record all the rides or anything like that. I think they did specifically say they wanted to consider privacy. So I forgot to ask about the camera, but maybe it's just if you call for help or something like that. I could be wrong, but I did get the impression that they don't record rides during your ride. As for the rest of the inside, there's not really anything too special in the back riding area. You can see there's actually two screens, one on the left and one on the right, so it doesn't matter which side you get in. But besides that, it's basically just kind of a regular minivan with three seats in the back, the two in the side. And I'm not really sure if you'd be able to ride in the front passenger seat if you got picked up, but who knows, probably not because the screens are in the back, but I don't know. In the front near the driver's seat, the only real difference I noticed was that there was a screen for the driver. It looked like some sort of tablet with most of the same info as the back screens. So I don't know if that's just temporary, if maybe they'll keep that, whether it goes full shelf driving at some point, I'm not sure, but that's what it looked like. The riding screens do have some other really cool things about them though. Like it'll show you the speed limit on the road, which obviously it should hopefully know. And then if there's like upcoming traffic signals, it'll show that icon on the top left. So if there's a stop sign, you'll see a little stop sign symbol up there. And if there's a traffic light, you'll see that. So right here it was waiting to turn and it was a red light. So you'll see a little red light. And then when it does turn green, so did the icon. The icon turned to a green light. And funny enough, it even knew about railroad crossings and it had its own symbol just for that. So I'd wonder how many different ones there are, probably one for everything. Also, when the turn signal on the car is on, you'll actually see a little flashing bar on the side of the screen to display that. Another really cool thing I noticed is the screen will actually show in real time the cars around you. So you'll see them as little squares on the road. And it seemed to be really accurate, even at a busy intersection with lots of lanes, it could see across lanes, probably because there's all the sensors on the top that can see over the cars. But not only that, the screen will also show you a visual representation of what the radar and the LIDAR sees, even on the sides of the road. So you can see on the sides, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but you can see sort of like a dot projection or a wire frame of different objects that are appearing on the sides of the road 
mode. So I thought it was just pretty cool so you can get an idea of what it's seeing. Now, as for what it was actually like riding in a self-driving car, really it was not weird as I thought it would be, probably because I knew that there was a backup driver there just in case. But like I mentioned, I don't even think he touched any of the controls at any point during the ride. Like even when you get in, you press the start button yourself, you get out yourself, all that sort of thing. It was about a 15 minute ride or so, and I would just describe it as really unremarkable in a good way. You really wouldn't want any surprises here in this sort of situation. So it pretty much behaved exactly as you'd expect. I felt really comfortable in the whole thing. And then once you get to the end of the ride, it'll just say it's finding spots to pull over, it'll show that. And then once it stops, you can simply get out and that's the end of the trip. We've arrived. Please check your surroundings before exiting the vehicle and remember to close the doors after you exit. Okay. So I'm really excited to see what happens next. Right now, Waymo is actually serving customers and they have been for a while now. The program is called Waymo One. It's only available in certain areas, but you can actually go on their website and sign up to be a part of it if you're in one of those areas or just join a wait list. Now for customers, how it works is you use the app. So you can see on the website, a little demo of how the app works. It looks pretty similar to other ride handling apps like what you would expect. You just choose a pickup and drop off location, all that sort of thing. And things are progressing pretty fast apparently because Waymo sent out an email recently to customers saying that you might have a chance of getting picked up by a fully self-driving car, no backup driver or anything. So that's really interesting and I'm really excited if they're that confident to be able to pick up customers with no backup driver at this point. Waymo also said that they're even working on the next generation of self-driving cars based on the Jaguar I-PACE cars. And apparently these are still in testing, so they're not actually in the fleet serving customers yet, but I'm sure it'll do that eventually. And I'm not sure that it's gonna be replacing all the Chrysler Pacificas, because they have so many of those, it would kind of go to waste. So I'm not really sure how that'll fit in, but it's still really cool. One thing to point out is that the Chrysler Pacificas are hybrids, whereas the next generation Jaguar I-PACE are all electric. And I think it'll be really awesome to see how all this progresses over time. I mean, 10 years ago, self-driving cars on the road serving customers was like a pipe dream. Who knows what will happen in another five to 10 years. So yeah, all in all, this was super awesome. And I obviously want to thank Waymo for giving me the opportunity to see all this stuff. And hopefully everyone watching this video, you might get self-driving cars sooner than you think, even in your area, we can all hope. So thanks for watching guys. If you want to keep watching another video I made recently, which I would recommend is one where I built a home server rack for my network and stuff like that. It's really cool to put all that together. So if you wanna check that out, the link will just be here to pop up and you can just click on it. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Again, follow me on Instagram if you want, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next video.